Right, we've managed to get Ulrika back, which I'm glad to see. Ulrika, hi. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Sorry about the, the technical difficulties, but thank you for being here because, you know, feelings are running really high and you, you put out that tweet. We, we didn't put all of it out there, but we, you put that out. It was very, it was clearly heartfelt words from you, focusing on your kind of experience, but also the experience of friends and people that you know. Mm. Yes, I think uh, the... Uh... The case of Sarah has uh, brought back lots of um, lots of feelings. I think that in some respects have been, you know, we haven't been dwelling on because we've been in the middle of a pandemic and we are thinking about lots of other things. And it, I suddenly just reflected on the fact that every single woman that I know, my close friends, some extended friends have had some form of harassment or violence, verbal, physical, or whatever and I was actually quite horrified by that realization it is you're right I mean we've been talking about that lots of it you know we've been talking about it here we've been talking about it among friends and it's almost like um depending again on, on where you live and your experience it's almost become a way of life for a lot of women you know that's that's the trouble it's it's that's kind of like the norm and this is crazy I mean I know when you came to London and you were a teenager your dad your late dad gave you advice didn't he yeah, absolutely. So I was told to keep a big coat in the back of my car, to try maybe possibly to walk in the middle of the road as opposed to in the dark pavement, uh, on the dark pavement, and also uh, to have my keys in my hand and, you know, just be ready and be prepared. And oftentimes would stop and pretend to be looking in my handbag to let somebody pass me mm -hmm. because... I felt intimidated by a man walking behind me. Um, and it's so ironic that I accepted, all, so many women have accepted that that's how we should behave. Exactly. You've got two boys, two girls. You've talked about this with your children, particularly your oldest son, Cameron. Um, and he, yeah. sent, he sent a really, a really good, again, very heartfelt message to his sisters, didn't he? I know. He, I was quite surprised because he, he set up a little group chat with his sisters who are 20 and 16. And I was worried he was going to say something dreadful had happened. But he just wanted to say that for, you know, every one, one man who wants to harm a woman, there are many who would die defending her. And he takes responsibility uh, for the fact that men need to be part of the societal change that needs to take place. And I was like moved to tears by this because I just thought that he took the initiative to reassure the next, you know, he, he is part of the next generation. And he took the initiative to reassure his, his sisters, which I thought was wonderful. It is wonderful. And that is one thing that gives us all hope is that generation, you know, the generation, I mean, because Cameron and, and my Rosie are, are round about the same age, of course, but, yeah. um, that they will be better. You know, the, me the yeah. young men will be better. I think they will be more educated. I mean, still, as we can see from what's happened, still an awful lot of a long way to go. But that does give me hope. It certainly does. And, I, you know, I've, I've felt a great deal of hope, uh, certainly with my 16-year-old, uh, Martha, who's a proper social justice warrior and brings up cases uh, all the time and discusses things and how we should behave and what we shouldn't accept and one thing and another. And it was actually thanks to her that... We, I must have been having a conversation with my daughters about behaviour and how they need to be careful and mindful of certain situations. And she piped up, and I'm, just, I'm sure this is a few years ago, she's 16 now, so maybe she was 14 or younger, and she said, why are you having this conversation with me? Is this conversation not one you should be having with young men and boys? And that really put me in my place, that all the time I've been thinking about how I need to behave, whereas actually this is an issue for other people and not for women. No, you're right. I mean, I remember, as you know, Rosie was in Singapore and, and Singapore is, is very safe. And she was able to walk home two o'clock yeah. in the morning, one o'clock in the morning, absolutely fine. And I remember when she came here, I had to have that conversation to say, look, it's different here. Not, I mean, yeah. all of the cities, all of our cities and all of our big towns, it is different here. And that was a horrible conversation to have to have, but you've got to, sadly. Yeah. Yes, and I know... Uh, you know, we talk about, you know, teaching girls self-defense and I did self-defense classes when I was what in my teens. Um, I'm guessing 
that if someone had did attack me, I'm not sure how much I would remember of that. I don't know. Uh, but I think those sort of things are really useful. But at the uh, at the sort of ground, at the roots, we need to really be having healthy conversations with men. And that because not every young boy is brought up in, in a household of equity and, uh, you know, equality. Uh, they will be products of their own environment. So I think it's it, it's a fundamental thing that needs to happen in the homes, in the schools. And that's the only way through, uh, you know, education, at least, who knows if we'll ever be able to, to stop this, but we need to give it a damn good go. No, we absolutely do. I know you weren't very happy with, with Davina McCall, not specifically Davina, but just words that she'd said. You know, she said that female abduction and murder is extremely rare. We should be vigilant when we're out alone, but this level of fear mongering isn't healthy. And she talked about men's mental health as well, um, calling out men as dangerous as bad for our sons and our brothers and our partners. I understand her point, but I know that that was something that you thought you weren't happy about. No, I, no, I wasn't. Uh, first of all, it's not fear mongering because this is happening. And to say that it's rare uh, is also incorrect. We know that domestic abuse is definitely not rare. Uh, and so I, I'm, I'm sure uh, what she was trying to do was to, to, to say, you know, let's not forget that this isn't all men. But I don't think that's a conversation that even needs to be had. Nobody has ever said that this is all men. And men's mental health is a, is a separate issue i think to this i don't think i had some um, really interesting responses on my instagram after my post uh and it wasn't until i was scrolling down on a, a couple of them who said they had been uh gang ra gang raped attacked that these were men that were leaving these messages for me mm -hmm. so that was really really quite shocking so it's men who are fearing men men aren't fearing women i wouldn't have thought and i think men's mental health is a very very important issue but i think it's not one that has a place in this conversation Ulrika, thank you very much indeed for joining us i really appreciate it. it's very very good to see you and of course we have to remember sarah and all her family who are grieving this is about her too um, mm. and it's a remarkable thing that has happened but it's just so so very sad thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.